This is a test program. The Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, studying lunar descent methods, a test program. The X-15, a test program to search the fringes of space. Gemini 9, floating down, landing, returning from the hostile reaches of space itself, a test program into the unknown. And in a few days, another probe into that void, another page in the annals of testing and searching for answers, the three days of Gemini 10. The crew for Gemini 10 is command pilot John Young and pilot Michael Collins. Long periods of training at zero gravity have gone into the preparation for the flight of Gemini 10. Of the 17 possible experiments carried aboard the 10 spacecraft, one which may affect more earthbound residents of the planet seeks to learn more about complex weather developments. In order to preserve the sight seen from their vantage point beyond the atmosphere, astronauts Collins and Young will use this camera to photograph weather developments from the spacecraft. Docking in space has been accomplished once in the history of manned spaceflight, and the 10 crew will rendezvous with the Agena target vehicle and attempt to physically join with it to study the effects of docked vehicles as it pertains to more advanced missions of the future. The Gemini 10 crew will also seek to rendezvous with the passive Agena left in space after the mission of Gemini 8. There are no plans to physically dock with the now silent Agena. But to prepare for docking in space with their own fully activated Agena, the Gemini 10 crew has spent many hours in the translation and docking simulator located in a large black room at the Manned Spacecraft Center, duplicating as nearly as possible the problems peculiar to the mating of two vehicles in outer space. The entire mission can be simulated while both crewmen are still on the ground by using the complex Gemini Procedures Simulator, which duplicates the mission from liftoff to reentry. Hours of classroom study in spaceflight dynamics lie behind the plans for extravehicular activity in Gemini 10's flight plan. More hours then are spent at zero G to prepare astronaut Collins for his spacewalk and the use of a space gun equipped with more propellant than ever before. The flight plan now calls for Collins to open the spacecraft hatch three times. First, to take pictures at night, second, for his daylight walk in space, and finally, to discard unneeded items. In a spacecraft the size of Gemini, there is a place for everything, and everything must be kept in its place. More hours of practice in the art of housekeeping, called stowage, must be completed until the crew is completely familiar with their home for three days and prepared to stow equipment away and move on to other experiments in the busy flight plan setup for Gemini 10. Man's physiological reactions to the stresses of outer space are constantly monitored here on Earth at the biomedical console in the Mission Control Center. In order to keep track of such medical matters, tiny plastic discs called biosensors are attached to the body of the astronaut and feed signals back to the flight surgeon in Houston in less than one second. While time passes in the training and preparation of the flight crew, Time also passes and events are marked in the actual construction of the so-called hardware to be used in the flight. Spacecraft designers once again go over with meticulous care the skeletal beginnings of what will eventually become the highly complex vehicle called Gemini 10. All phases of construction are carefully monitored at all points, both prime and subcontractors, as the spacecraft takes shape and is checked out. Then, when all is ready, carefully wrapped and shipped to the Cape Kennedy Launch Facility, lifted and joined to the Gemini Launch Vehicle, it stands ready to carry two men into space with the three days of Gemini 10. <laughs>